I am going to just talk through how you would go about synchronizing a generator using just one monitor. So in some other videos I've used two monitors set up. Um, synchronizing with one monitor uh, is possible and I'll show you how to do that in this video. So I'm going to use my steam turbine. I've just got it up and running and we're going to take a look at how we would go about synchronizing my steam turbine. Okay, so we're going to be connecting my generator. Um, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to my panel directory. And we're going to go to page 144, which is my main switchboard for my turbo generator. Now, if you were using a different generator, um, you would go to its main switchboard page. But uh, turbo generator is what I'm going to synchronize, so that's what I am going to use. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my excitation, okay? And we can see now that we are starting to read some values with our um, generator. Voltage I don't read yet, um, however, because it's a three-phase system, I need to read the voltage across phases. Um, so picking any of those phases would give me my voltage uh, and I can see that my generator seems to be working. In order to be able to synchronize, I need to be able to read data for this generator compared to the grid or the bus. Um, and so in order to do that, I'm going to need to use my Synchroscope. So Synchroscope has its own page, but I can also bring up a small window by clicking on Synchroscope. So I've pulled up my Synchroscope window, and um, what we can see is we have a little indicator, we've got a switch, and we've got some graphs here. Um, nothing seems to be running. Uh, in order for it to run, I need to move my, my switch over to the turbo generator position, and all of a sudden now things seem to be working. My synchroscope has this red dot moving around. We'll more on that in a moment. Um, before we can worry about the red dot, we have to worry about these two green dots down in the bottom. So we have one that's talking about the frequency. It is not illuminated. And we have one that's talking about the voltage and it is illuminated. These guys refer to the graphs over on the side here. So I have voltage, which is comparing the generator output voltage compared to the grid or the bus and the generator frequency compared to the bus frequency. We can see that the generator frequency in this case is correct. Okay. And we could adjust that by adjusting our excitation, but we look fine and our synchroscope is telling us that it's okay with its position. The bus frequency, however, compared to my generator frequency is not. So I am not illuminated. And if we look, we can see that our generator seems to be higher than the bus in terms of its frequency. So how do we slow that down? Well, if we go back to our steam turbine, just for a minute here, so I'm gonna go back to our steam turbine. In this case, what we have is a valve that is controlling how much steam moves through the turbine. And right now it's at about 15%. And in order for me to change the speed, so right now it's at 6,400 and a little bit, uh, I would need to change how much steam can go through that turbine. So I'm going to try and close this valve. You'll notice there's no controls on this page to slow it down but the controls were back on page 144. It's controlled by the governor. Okay, so I'll bring back up my synchroscope window and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decrease that steam valve position. So decrease. Uh, this works a little weird uh, compared to our normal um, use. Uh, we're gonna click on and then let go of the button, and then when we're ready, we're gonna click again to turn it off. Okay. And you can see that as I'm decreasing this governor position, 
my frequency is dropping and at some point uh, my light is going to illuminate to tell me my frequency is okay. If I go too far, my light is now telling me that it's no longer okay. So I have a small window where I'm slightly faster than the bus, but not too fast that is my acceptable range. So I'm gonna increase my governor position until I'm in the acceptable range and my frequency tells me that it is. Now what I have to do is I have to wait for the frequency to be, um, or the position, I guess, of, or the timing of that frequency to be the same as the grid. And the timing for when I connect is indicated by when this red dot uh, gets into the green zone. So I generally am waiting to hit the 11 o'clock position with a red dot that's moving clockwise. And when I do, what I'm going to want to do is connect with my circuit breaker. Okay, so I'll wait for my red dot to get into the green zone. And they're at the 11 o'clock position and I've hit connect. Okay, so uh, depending on your simulation, you may have a pop up telling you that you have completed your simulation. Um, before we move on, I just want to talk about a few things that have happened here. One, our frequency was slightly higher than 60 hertz, which is my bus frequency. Now that I've connected, it is locked in. And you can see that my synchroscope is no longer free to move around. So I've essentially locked in my generator. The electricity that it's producing is now locked to the grid. So what is flowing through the wires that it's connected to. My generator now is producing some power, so it is producing some electricity and it's sending it out to the rest of the electrical system. My governor now plays the role that if I change my governor, it's no longer going to change the speed because the speed is locked. What it's going to do is going to allow more steam through my turbine resulting in more or less power being produced. So if I want to produce more power, I could open up that steam valve. I could increase it. And you can see that our power tends to increase. So that is how we would go about synchronizing a generator using just one monitor.